today's kernel goes out to Jordan. We had a great conversation earlier this week about getting started with investing. And I'll tell you all what I told Jordan. I know this all seems intimidating and scary, but you can do this. It's easier than it looks. So Jordan, I wish you the best of luck on the start of your investing journey and hope you enjoy today's episode. Hey, this is Chris. Hope you're doing well and welcome to Popcorn Finance, the show where we discuss finance and about the time it takes to make a bag of popcorn. It feels like there have been so much information rolling out about student loans during the pandemic that I thought we should do another episode talking about it here on the podcast. So I've asked the most knowledgeable person that I know on this topic to join me today, Robert Farrington. How are you doing, Robert? Great. Thanks so much for having me here. It has been a crazy year and student yeah. loans are uh, a hot subject right now with everything going on. Yeah, it's like I'm hearing I, I've, I've heard so much conflicting information on student loans from so many different people. So I was like, you know what? I'm sure I'm not the only one. So let's clear some of this uh, craziness that's going on out there. And if you don't remember, Robert was on episode 80, which was like 130 episodes ago. It feels like forever. And so it was great to have you back. And uh, Robert, he is a student loan expert and founder of the collegeinvestor.com. Today, I wanted to talk about some of what's going on. And really, I want to focus on this whole student loan deferral situation because I've heard, you know, uh, the interest has been deferred. I've I've had several different people tell me there's been different time frames. And I was like, are you sure you heard that? Or did you just there's another friend tell you that? So if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to throw three really quick, hopefully short questions at you. What is this whole deferral situation? How long, if at all, is interest deferred for and who qualifies for it? Yeah, definitely. So you're not wrong because at the beginning of the pandemic, there was a ton of misinformation and it wasn't even misinformation. It was almost just like there was a fire hose of information coming (laughs) at us so fast that, you know, it was really hard that day by day things were changing. But here's where we stand today. And this is what you need to know. So if you have a federal student loan, your interest and payments are frozen at 0% interest, no payments required until after 12-31-2020. So through the end of the year. That means if you have a federal student loan, your first payment that you're gonna have to make, and it's been a while, is gonna be due sometime in January. So if you've had a student loan right now, a federally held student loan, you haven't had to make any payments. And and most borrowers got the message, the stats came out, over 90% of borrowers didn't make any payments on their loans. Oh, wow. But that's changing coming up here in January, 2021. And, you know, it's going to be like almost like, you know, uh, starting a new habit again because we've stopped it for so long. You need to check your statements. You need to check your payments. You need to make sure things go through like they're supposed to. Your first payment is going to be due sometime in January 2021. Asterix, unless Mm. something changes, because, you know, (laughs) at this point in time, who knows what's going to change uh, in Washington. I don't see anything changing with this, but, you know, there we go. Yeah, we're recording this before the election, <laughs> if anyone is wondering. So, uh, yeah, who, who, we can't predict the future, so we don't know what's about to happen, though. Yeah, right. Uh, but I don't I don't see that aspect changing uh, before the end of the year. Uh, it doesn't look like we're getting another stimulus at this point in time until next year. So I, I think it's pretty safe to say if you have a federal student loan, plan on making your first payment again in January 2021. When you said that things are frozen right now, this means that if I have a federal student loan and actually Could you clarify that point really quickly before I even get into any more detail? So there's, as I understand it, there's federal and there's private student loans, right? Are those the two main buckets? Those are the two main buckets. So, and then within the federal bucket, uh, there are various types of loans. And so if Mm. you have a federal direct student loan, these are directly held loans that are owned by the government, which is basically every single student loan that came after 2007. If you have a student Mm, loan after 2007, you qualify. And I just call it a freeze or a pause because that's the best way to describe it. Your payments are zero and your interest is zero. It's like literally your loan is frozen in time. And and so that's why it's different. It's not like a normal deferment. A normal deferment interest keeps growing. And this one, there is no interest right now. So I like to really think of it as a pause or a freeze of your student loans. Now, if you have an old student loan before 2007, those are FFEL loans and they don't qualify because the government doesn't own them. Even though you feel like you have a federal student loan, uh, your loan is actually owned by the Sally Mays of the world or the the Navians of the world, not necessarily the Department of Education. So basically 2007 and and towards today, your loans are frozen, 
pre-2007, you might still be making payments. And that was a lot of headache for people when this first came out because they didn't know. People just think, oh, I took out a student loan, you know, it's frozen. No, not necessarily. Um, and then again, too, the private student loans, of course, those, uh, those are not offering any kind of special programs like this. Some lenders did offer a three month deferment, but most of that is all expired at this point in time. And, you know, remember private loans are like car loans. They're like mortgages. There's not really any help there for you. Like you owe what you owe. And if you don't pay it, you're going to be in trouble. Wow. So that, that is confusing. <laughs> I remember you broke that down. That's you. What you said isn't confusing. That was a great breakdown, but the situation is confusing. And I can see why so many people didn't know what was going on because you could be in any one of those buckets. And like for myself, I started college in 2005. If I would have had a student loan from then at that point in time, I could be in that bucket. That, that well, and you, you might have it even worse because you might have had two student loans, 2005, 2006, that didn't qualify. And then 2007, 2008, <laughs> that did qualify. And this is the problem with student loans, man. It is, it's confusing. And every time they try to reform the system and make it better, really all they do is add another layer of confusion onto the pile of programs and services and options. And it just gets overwhelming. Yeah, that's why I asked you on because I was like, I'm not even going to attempt to answer these questions because I don't want to mess it up because I feel like there's just there's, a, there's so much nuance to this topic. There is. There's so much nuance. If I'm in this fortunate bucket that was able to have my student loans frozen for this period of time, so there's no interest accruing, I'm not responsible for any payments right now. Should I be then saying, hey, if I can, if I if I'm still working and I have the money, is it a good time to be attacking those student loans and paying them down? If your loan is frozen, no. Do hmm. not give the government an extra dollar of your money <laughs> before they are entitled to it. So if it was me, I would look at my whole financial situation and I'd take that student loan payment and I'd probably apply it to other debt or loans I had to build myself a buffer, right? So credit card debt, knock it out. Car debt, knock it out. Uh, if I had private loans, maybe I could try to knock those out, right? They're not paused. But why would I give the government any extra money that they're not entitled to until January? And even if you're ready to make that big payment and knock out a big portion of it, make it on December 31st. Don't do it a day early. Put it in a high yield savings account, earn your 0.8% interest that you're getting <laughs> these days. But shoot, that's 50 more dollars into your pocket than giving it to the government and taking, letting them have your money. But I would also say part two is you're also hedging your bet a little bit. What if the administration and presidency and Congress and stuff changes and they want to push forward with any type of loan forgiveness programs? Well, you're going to really kick yourself if you just didn't want to wait a month and, and see if there is an option out there. They're going to forgive $10,000. I, I don't hold my breath for this stuff, but on the flip side, like, why would you not? Like, you're not paying any interest, any penalties, any anything for waiting. And if something does happen, you're just going to be so upset with yourself. You know, that's a good point. I did <laughs> not think about it that way at all, because it's not like all of a sudden they're going to throw a bunch of interest on it for this period nope. of time you've been waiting. So there's no real penalty to wait until the end to kind of see how things shake out. 100%. There's no penalty. It's a buffer for you. And like I said, I'd rather see you make a lot of headway and, and better your financial situation. Because the fact is, we are in a period of huge economic uncertainty. A lot of people are struggling, losing their jobs. I don't see things getting better in 2021. I think the pandemic is full on, full force here. We're not going to see jobs return in force. So like, this could be a great opportunity for you to clean up your financial house build an emergency fund, make sure that you're feeling stable going into the new year. Mm, that's a great point. And so speaking of 2021, what do you see? Have you heard anything uh, about what we can expect next year when it comes to student loans? Is there anything, <laughs> any news popping out? I'm, I'm sure it's, it's maybe as confusing as me understanding the different types of student loans. Sure. I mean, there's a lot of proposals out there and not trying to get political, but as it stands, uh, Donald Trump, if he's president again, hasn't really done much to reform student loan debt. In fact, uh, chances are things will get more challenging if he continues to be the president. The reason is, is they are going to have new loan servicers starting mm. in 20. They were going to be this year, but that got kicked out by the court. So it's probably going to be next year, but it's just going to be a mess for student loan borrowers. They're suddenly going to see like maybe their loans were being serviced by Fed loan. And now it's going to be JL Khan and associates and all these things are going to swap around and change. And it's going to be a nightmare for student loan borrowers. So that is on the horizon unless uh, another president comes in and changes it. Now, if Biden becomes president, uh, he has a lot of proposals out there. Um, the most, uh, 
one that's most talked about is $10,000 in loan forgiveness for certain qualified student loan borrowers. That's great. And, and it's potential. I, I don't see that aspect of his plan being passed. I think Americans have a really hard time with the something for nothing loan forgiveness programs. And what I mean by that is right now, 50% of every student loan borrower qualifies for some type of loan forgiveness with no changes to the laws. 50% of people get something, but all of these programs require you to do something. So what I mean by yeah. that is the most popular program right now is public service loan forgiveness, right? And what you get is 10, if you work in public service for 10 years, you get your loans forgiven. And so you do something, work for 10 years and what we all, I guess what, what Congress, but I guess what the American people <laughs> deem as like, uh, you know, what we, we need these jobs, right? Public service jobs are very um, wide ranging. So state, local, federal government, the military, police, teachers, educators, working in nonprofit hospitals, things like that. Like, so these are jobs that we say we value. You do a job like that for 10 years and you get your loans forgiven. I think those kind of programs are great. And I do think that the majority of Americans support them because like you give, you give me, I give you kind of quid pro quo. It all works out. I think these blanket type of like everyone just gets 10 grand off their loans. It doesn't really, it's not going to fly with a lot of people. So I wouldn't hold my breath. Not to say that crazier things haven't happened. Here we are pausing our loans, right? For like, yeah, I, yeah, I, if you went, if you went back to 2018 and you said, Hey, we're going to do zero payment, zero interest. I would have been laughing at you like, <laughs> like that's yeah, never right. going to, yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> never going to happen. So crazier things have happened, um, but I wouldn't hold my breath on it. I would see a bunch of reforms though, coming into student loans. He's also proposed changing repayment plans to be 5% of your income now, instead of 10 or 15%, like some programs mm -hmm. are. And he's proposed free college, um, which I, I, I'm actually a very big fan of because you can't solve the student loan problem until you solve the paying for college problem. Exactly. Right? It's, the, it's the chicken and the egg is what are you going to tell someone that's in college right now that everyone's loans are forgiven? And then all of a sudden you're like, what about me? I have one more year to pay for school. Do I borrow? Do I not borrow? Like, how is that going to work? It just doesn't make logical sense. <laughs> yeah, no, no, not at all. Because the problem's still going to exist. You're going to have a, a new batch of people coming through with the same problems. <laughs> exactly. And so I do think that his, his plans to reform paying for college is going to help the situation and then reforming these payment plans. I also think he has some proposals to reform public service loan forgiveness, make it easier to qualify. I can see more changes like that happening in the future, which I think make a lot of sense um, to help student loan borrowers. Like there shouldn't be rejections for the wrong loan type or the wrong repayment plan. Like, why are you making these mm, programs that are yeah. already super confusing, even more confusing? Like, come on now, like we can figure this out like smart adults. Let's do some common sense reforms. So once again, I don't hold my breath for loan forgiveness, but it is a proposal and you should know it exists. But uh, I do think we'll see a lot of reforms in terms of how we're paying our loans, how the programs work, and literally just fixing some of this bureaucracy that uh, is really frustrating student loan borrowers. I I'm really looking forward to see what comes down the road. I'm hoping it's positive things because, yeah, it's I've looked at student loans, you know, off and on, and it's still very confusing to me. So I can only imagine what everyone else is dealing with trying to sort through all this information. So. Uh, Robert, thank you so much for taking the time to break this down. I feel like I learned even more than I was expecting to learn from you right now. So I really do appreciate it. You, you opened a can of worms and, you know, here we go. You opened a bag of popcorn. You didn't realize there were so many kernels in there. I didn't realize, didn't realize this was a family bag. But exactly. It was like, now, this was great. Thank you so much for this information. If people want to learn more, they want to get more of this great information. What's the best place for them to figure out more of what you're doing? Yeah, you can come to thecollegeinvestor.com or you can listen to our podcast, The College Investor Audio Show on your favorite podcasting platform. Oh, perfect. I'll put notes to all of that in the uh, show notes. I'll put links to all that in the show notes so that way people can find you and, and listen to your show. And also, I'll have you back. You're coming back. We're going to do a Q&A episode, answer some questions that listeners have sent in because this was great, but I know there's just so much more we can dive into when it comes to student loans. So, uh, Robert, thanks again for your time and looking forward to having you back on. Awesome. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. Your boy keep it poppin' like Mary Poppins.